right on. Yeah. Well, we're guys. Uh, if you guys have questions, please, by all means, ask questions. They're here to answer questions. Of course, they're here at the show, at their tables, answering questions, autographs, things like that. So whatever you guys want to learn, ask away. <laughs> Not all at once. Yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead. Well, I was gonna, it was the same thing that you had asked. And so I know with the, you know with the success of the movie, I know there there's plans to start another movie, and there's a, like a black eye, and I was wondering if anybody had contacted you. Last I talked to you, was you Michael Monterey? You, there was no, you know, there was some chatter, but with the, you know, like you said, with the success of the movie, was there any since nothing? No, you know. Well, the Sh Shazam two, because I don't have a title yet. I'm assuming it's Shazam two is being written right now. They're in pre-production, and um, when I did DC Daily. The producers of that say they were going to talk to people in the film department about possibly getting both of us in in Shazam 2, but we don't know yet. And there's a petition petition being passed around on Facebook right now to try to get Shazam fans to sign it and they can send it over to Warner Brothers because Warners and DC are doing it. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, what, what would the harm be in that of getting the classics mixed in with the new stuff and just have you there, even if it's yeah. just a cameo? I mean, well, that was like in uh, in the Hulk. You saw Lou Ferrigno walk across the screen, yeah, wearing a security guard's outfit, mm -hmm. and I was waiting for it. I said, "Ferrigno's got to be in this," and there he was. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, they got him in the Eric the Eric Bana version and the Edward Norton version. He was in both of those." Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yep. Yeah. No one else. Any other? The show of film all year round. I mean, I know you guys, you know, when you film shows, like it was shot all down pr primarily in Southern California, correct? Mm -hmm. So, was it like a certain season, like they said, you know, we start filming in May and then we end in October, or was it a uh, year round? I mean, I know. It was a summer shoot. Starting to shoot in May and yeah. finish in June. <laughs> we were doing, back then, we did, like three when I was doing The Little People back in the 70s, you shot one episode a week and you shot for 26 weeks. With Shazam, we did two episodes a week. And we did it all within about seven weeks. It was done, boom, for the full season. Yeah, I was yeah. curious, like, how many episodes did you film a week? How long were the days, you know? Yeah, about two and a half days an episode, that was it. And then we go right to the next one. That had to be pretty rigorous. I mean, that's an all... It was vigorous. And sometimes you put the wrong lines in it from the wrong episode. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's, that's next week. <laughs> yeah, and you get on the set sometimes at 6.30 in the morning, and they give you a script. Here's the new script for today. Oh, okay. You have half an hour to learn it, to go learn it. I didn't have to learn anything. I just had to fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you had to learn how to fly again. <laughs> but so the... Go ahead. You guys, you guys get you know, like some fun stories from, from filming in those days? With, you know, with Les Tremaine? Yeah. There was, yeah. well... Yeah. <clears throat> there was actually a Christmas reel around somewhere which mostly had bloopers on and stuff, but we don't know what happened to it. So there was a lot of fun stuff that went on that was behind the scenes and whatnot. Um, like the day he came on the set, they brought him on the set, and he was running back and forth and back and forth and doing flying scenes and running around, and Les Truman and I were watching him. And he walked by and said, geez, nobody told us it was going to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> Exhausted. Uh, they drug me out of a nice, peaceful a nap at my apart in my apartment. Two hours later, I'm out on on the set of Shazam. <clears throat> so and it just happened to be that uh, two of the uh, w one of the scenes re required me to be running. And man, they ran and ran me. I thought I think it had to be uh, like an initiation to you know, <laughs> but I ran and ran and ran. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> that was that was my in introduction into the Shazam. And there was a lot of a lot of uh, practical joking and stuff that went on throughout the shoots. We we had, we had a lot of fun working together. I really really got along great with with Mike and and uh, Les and and uh, the rest of the whole crew. It was, a, it was like a bit big family. It was really a lot of fun. Yeah. I've seen a picture of you. I mean, in one of the other shows that I was really interested in uh, back in those days was uh, Land of the Lost. And I'd seen you guys did a group picture with all the guys from Land of the Lost and from Shazam a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty fantastic. So I know you guys didn't really film on 
like a, a sound stage per se, right? There was no filming done. Everything was done out in pretty much in a, in a small town in the valley, right? We shot out, everything was on location. They did some flying stuff with him in a, in a, in a studio, a sound stage, but 99% of the stuff is outside. Different, sti- different city. From the other shows, like during those years, other than parties and stuff like that, you weren't, you know. Right. right. Wesley, I got to meet a few times uh, way back in, the, in that era, you know, Christmas parties and whatnot. Right. Yeah. There was one time Les pulled a practical joke. Maybe it was the second or third episode of the first season. Uh, I said Shazam. And they had, the, back the first couple of times we did it, we had a smoke instead of the uh, the lightning bolt come down. The smoke would blow up basically and then it would subside and Captain Marvel would be standing there. So I said Shazam one time, the smoke came up, it cleared and Les was standing there in Captain Marvel's outfit. <laughs> Looking like this. <laughs> so Mentor was dressed up as Captain Marvel, that was funny. <laughs> But Les was a pro back in the you know, days before there were movies and, and radio, so he, he would pull sticks all the time. He was a funny guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. When you did the special effects, did you do any wire work at all, or was it all just, I mean, how simple or complex was it? It was, it was pretty simple. Uh, uh, the first season I was on, they, they did some of the flying with, hanging me, they did in, in the studio, was hanging by a wire. And uh, that was not comfortable at all. <laughs> and then uh, the second season, they had that, the blue uh, screen. Yeah. And that was much, much easier to uh, so negotiate. Up, uh, getting jacked up on the cables and wondering <laughs> if you're going to be able to father again. And <laughs> 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 Pretty much so. <laughs> it, was, it was it was probably all the practice to get Christopher yeah, Reeve to fly. And, and I, I remember uh, uh, that when in the second season when when uh, we were doing the episode, and I was up there, you know, suffering in this uh, this belt and uh, hanging around, and they just leave you hanging there because they can't keep, you know, they. It's kind of complicated to unhook you, and, uh, and but uh, I was kind of like, like Joanne Cameron was kind of teasing me about, about how much suffering I was doing. You know, I said, "Well, you just wait. You just wait." And of co- when it came her time to fly, she was like, you know, she was like a f- fly. I mean, she was just. She, she didn't weigh that much, so it, so there wasn't the the pressure on her, you know. So her her flying scenes were very very simple, but mine were really painful. <laughs> <laughs> the age of practical effects and making sure everything was wired up right and <laughs> didn't really have all the hard work put into it like they have now. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Like I said, it's probably practice for them getting Christopher Reeve to fly later on a couple of years down the road. I'm sure for Superman. Right. Yeah. Right. What have you been doing since Shazam? I mean, I, you still do some voice acting, and yeah, I, I I stopped working for quite a while because I was so typecast. I would still try to work after Shazam, but I would go out for interviews for different uh, TV series and whatnot episodes, and they said we can't cast you in this. You're too identifiable as Billy Batson. So I got to the point. I said, okay, I'm done. So I did all sorts of odd jobs over the years. And then um, about three years ago, uh, my son was watching Archer, and Archer was lying out by the pool with uh, Lana, and he had amnesia, and he said, what was the guy's name who starred uh, in the Shazam Hour? So there was a pause, and he said, oh, it was Michael Gray who played Billy Batson. So my son called me and said, they just talked about you on Archer. So Adam Reed, the creative archer, and I hooked up, and he wanted to know if I would do a couple of episodes, which I did. And they were fun, and I just did uh, two more last month for the final seasons. They just aired those last week. And um, I don't know what's going to happen now. I mean, I'm getting offers for certain things, and I have to see what I want to do. But these Comic-Cons are fun, too. I've got uh, two next week, next month, actually, Bakersfield, 
for the same guys who put this one on. And then I'm doing, uh, he's doing it with me, and then we're doing Reno, Pop Culture Con after that as well. So we're on the road again. I'm on the road again. Yep. Kind of like the show. <laughs> on the road again. <laughs> there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. How grueling was it to be on location for that, for, like you said, like 99% of the show? Grueling. Can you, like, run through, like, a day or a week of that? What, what was that kind of shooting schedule like and the responsibilities for it? And like you were saying, 6 in the morning, you get the brand new script for that day and half hour to try to prep it and everything. But what, what was that day like of just getting through that, other than the running and having your <laughs> package yanked up and everything? <laughs> well, it was, uh, we were pretty much from sunset to sunrise, sunrise to sunset, excuse me. And... It was all in the summer, and a lot of times we were out in places like Vasquez Rocks, where it was 105, 106 degrees, and we're shooting inside the motorhome with big spotlights outside, too, so maybe it's 120 degrees in the motorhome. It got so hot one day, the windshield cracked. So it was pretty grueling. It was tiring. You're, you're burned out by the end of the day. And um, actually, one scene, Lester Man and I were in the motorhomes doing our dialogue back and forth, and we were sweating profusely. And we both had blue eyes, so it's difficult when you, have, when you have bright lights with blue eyes where I try not to squint. So when the windshield cracked, Les looked over at me and said, I won't say what he said, but um, <laughs> it wasn't appropriate for a kid's show. <laughs> it's like, what the F? <laughs> you know, what's going on around here? Like, mentor, you can't say that. So it was pretty grueling, it really was. there like meet and greets like you know now we have the comic cons were there meet and greets back when the show was popular like at like malls or like I mean comic book stores where I guess still prevalent but did you guys do any of those like yeah. then or yeah yeah we did they were pretty much auto shows back then yeah yeah car shows pretty much every weekend we only did uh, one together that was in Chicago <clears throat> but uh, yeah I did several uh they were either like uh, theme park shows or um, auto shows, mainly, or opening a, a mall or something like that. Yeah. Got to work with some cool people back then, too, because the car shows were amazing. I got to work with Adam West and Burt Ward. I got to work with the guys in Welcome Back, Cotter, um, the Bionic Man, Bionic Woman, Dick Clark. It was fun. You know, the car shows were, were a big deal back then because it was pre, pre-Comic Cons. So it was fun. Well, and you had the Winnebago. You could show up in that, showcase the Winnebago. <laughs> that would have been more fun, <laughs> bring the Winnebago, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People still want to see it. I do too. We don't know where it is. It vanished. Uh, no one knows where it is. It's probably long gone, unfortunately, probably. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, how, like, just talking about the shows now, I mean, how have the shows now been having people come and, and, and see you and say hi and ask questions like we have going on here? I mean, how has that been for you guys? It's fun. It really is. Uh, sometimes it's very heartwarming, too, because I have people come up to me quite often and tell me how Shazam made them the adults they are today and good people that they are today because of Shazam. A lot of them came from broken homes or issues going on in their households. And they couldn't wait for Saturday morning to get away from what was going on with their bowl of cereal to watch Shazam. It was their escape. And it had good moral values, all the stuff back then and good moral values compared, you know, compared to what's on TV nowadays. So we need more of that. And uh, I didn't know at the time that the show was so important to a lot of people. I didn't realize that. And now I like hearing it. It makes me feel good. Yeah, I didn't either. I, I um, it's <clears throat> been very uh, illuminating and inspiring to hear some of the stories and s some of the people that uh, talk about the show and how much it meant to them. And I just thought it was a job, you know, that, that I en enjoyed and p other people enjoyed it, but I had no idea that some of the, uh, um, the, the drama that was going on in some of these kids' homes, that uh, Shazam was like their savior I mean they just uh, even those little speeches that I thought were kind of corny <laughs> were those kids you know little kids they they really they, they listen and that and that 
and it stuck with him so sometimes, you know. Always. So it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a great experience. I'm really, really proud and uh, pleased that I, that I participated in that show. I think it's remarkable the extent to which actors such as yourselves have these parts that, that again, for you, it's, it's kind of this job you're doing right there, and you may not, like we were just saying, understand the impact that it's having, but as a, as a high school teacher, I don't think things have changed that dramatically. A lot of kids in home situations that, you know, they need something to, to see that role model type, and like the corny lines and stuff that you recall and stuff, those, those corny lines tend to be the ones that are the most impactful. They really um, yeah, I know for really myself growing up, you know, Star Trek original series and then the filmation animated series to it, then Shazam and everything that just, I always watch it for those little kind of moments to kind of yeah. see that, that yeah. nugget of truth that you needed to hear in that, you know, today corny yeah. way, but yeah. when you're the kid, it's just, oh, that's what that means. Yeah. And you get it and, and then it just kind of shapes you for the future and stuff. And, yeah. You know, not like I had such a terrible life compared to a lot of my students today who really have brutal kind of home environments. Yeah. But but then you look at the, the superhero genre today and you don't get those nice little corny nuggets of of truth anymore. I mean it's yeah. just all the big ripped bodies and and the flat out destruction of that, you know, you're it's happening in a Superman movie again and it's like Yeah. Way too much and that was one thing that was funny about the the recent Shazam movie that it, it just kind of toned all that back down again and tried to make it fun again so yeah. that you could get some of that corniness back into it so that you can convey that kind of message to, to be I was just curious what other thoughts maybe you guys had about that because uh, it seems like a lot of uh, a lot of actors in popular shows like this you know it was just a job but then you go out and you start realizing no you really had this important impact on people and I was just wondering if you had any more thoughts on that. I'm, I just personally, I'm glad we did it. I, again, I didn't realize the impact it would have or was having and it just, again, it makes me feel good to know that we helped some people get through some hard times. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, we need more stuff like that on TV right now. Yeah. yeah. Made me get through some hard times too because I needed a job. <laughs> 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 but uh, what would you think let's say you could get your youth back for it today no way you would be able to look like you did back then you'd have to so much more beef up today what, what are your thoughts about that shift in the superhero look today because oh, you looked great oh, you I looked great oh, I was a kid I didn't know any better nice try kid <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you showed me what I needed to do to kind of look good. And yeah. So, but today, well, I mean, the, how do you think you would the even... The first season, I wasn't looking that great because I was pretty beefy, let's say. <laughs> and the second season, I had a little... Ch I kind of watched my diet and worked worked out a little bit and, and uh, looked a little bit better the second season. But uh, <clears throat> it seemed to work. They, you know, uh, the... I was kind of the backup quarterback because uh, the first season was Jackson Bostwick, and then I took his place. But Jackson was he was pretty buff and all toned down. But I, I was kind of the uh, well-fed Captain Marvel. <laughs> I could play mentor now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little old for a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, but I can still play him. <laughs> he was in his 60s back then, Les. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes, is there no. any contact with Jackson Boswick between either of you? Or is, there, is there any contact between you guys and Jackson Boswick? Is no. Is there a thing about perhaps putting him all three? I mean, I know he does some stuff I see once in a while online. He does some conventions out. In like, you know, he lives down in like Tennessee or something like that. So... I haven't made contact with him uh, in 45 years. Because he left the show, yeah. is that right? He left the show after the first year, and John took over. And John and I became friends. We're still friends. Jackson and I uh, haven't spoken. Um, I saw him once at a, 
retro event down in Southern California. I approached him to say hello, and he didn't talk to me. So I, that was it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. think there'd be something from like merchandising like I know it's huge online like I said there's so many different Shazam and Captain Marvel pages the original Captain Marvel there's a Shazam uh, TV show like page specifically and there's people that really go over each episode and like break it down stuff like that but I've never seen any like merchandising besides custom things that have your depiction or your depiction and like a, like a figure is there any been and I know that's a huge thing now with like you can go in Shazam I mean they have keychain there I, is there any, even anything to reach out to do stuff from the CD show? Like the, like it would, you know, depict your characters, I should say, as opposed to the new Zachary Levi. Is there anything we can reach out to do that? Or Not really, no. I'm no. It's such a market nowadays, and they, you know, go on, like Adam West Batman, you know, there's a mm -hmm. whole merchandising line just for him. You know, right. Because that's, yeah. kids that grew up in the 70s watching the old Batman. Yes. Yeah. And not yet, we haven't heard anything, right? No. No? No. <laughs> yeah, the resurgence is still growing, believe it or not. I mean, it's just it, you know, just like I said, it just started seven years ago with the release of the DVD by Warner Brothers, but it's getting bigger and better every year. Now with DC jumping in, doing the streaming, and now with the uh, Blu-ray coming out, and the next movie, we'll see what happens. You know, so it could pick up. We'll see. Yeah, it's fun. Get some rekindled interest, get that stuff back out there, and then, again, maybe get you guys some cameos and new stuff or bring it back in. Uh, I know CW is working on that right now for yep. the big finale for Arrow and all that. They've That's actually right. brought Burt Ward back into the they show, yep. and they're bringing, uh, they've been talking about trying to get Michael Keaton from the 89 mm -hmm. Batman, and there's actually a mention of the character there, but that yeah. would be... That'd be great. They get you guys. Let's talk about that on Facebook too. People are trying to get us and you know to get them to do something with us. So we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. But no one's contacted us yet about it. Is there a reason why the United you know, didn't follow closely enough? Like, well, so three seasons were filmed, right? For Shazam, for, mm -hmm. for yeah. So when they come to you, why was there a season four? Is they just decided to discontinue, or I never. What I heard was financially they couldn't go into season four. That's, that's the only thing I ever heard. That's what I heard, too. Yep. Filmation, was, you know, it was a small studio and mostly animated work before that. It was their first venture into live action. So I was told financially they couldn't go into a fourth season. And it wasn't because of our salaries, I, that's I, for I sure. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Especially not back then, no. <laughs> Yeah. Not like you had to pay for all those productions and stuff. Yeah, so no, that's it it could have gone on for a long time, but it just didn't happen. I was gonna say, how did you like hear about the role? Like what was the audition process like for you guys? I knew what you said. How did you hear about like the role of the Shazam show? Like how did you hear about the show and like how did you audition go about auditioning and stuff? How do we hear about the show initially? Oh, well, I had just, um, personally myself, I had just finished shooting a series of Brian, Keith, and Shelley Fabray in Hawaii called The Little People. And they changed the format of the show after the first year to The Brian Keith Show, and they wrote my part out. So I was not working at the time, and then I got called by the Brady Bunch to do an episode of that. And then my agent said she got a call from a studio called Filmation. They wanted to talk to me about playing Billy Batson in a series. Would you go out and talk to him? So I drove out to the studio and talked to them, and they said, we want you in the show. It really wasn't even an audition. It was just we want you in the show, and uh, would you like to do it? I said, sure. So that was it. <laughs> did Did you go out and research who the character was? And no, I didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> we want you. Be here Monday. That's it. Basically, that's what it was. Yeah, <laughs> show up Monday morning. We're shooting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Did you go out after that point and take a look at that? or I had to, yeah. yeah. I just started reading the scripts. That's all I knew at that point. Let's see what's going on here. And then I checked it out a little bit. But I was a Superman kid when I was, I wasn't a Captain Marvel fan. I was, I used to watch George Reeves and Superman on TV. So this was a new venture for me, a new superhero. Yeah, kind of, kind of similar. But now you get a kid being a, a you know, the most powerful mortal or most powerful mortal right. kind of thing. And yeah. You know, yeah. No, oh, had to do the research after that point, right? Yep, <laughs> after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> I have the part. Who am I again? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you 
each uh, speak to how you got into drama and acting itself, because uh, I'm also a drama teacher as well as English, and my kids are here with me, they won't sit up here with me, but uh, they're both, one of them in drama right now, and the other one says he's gonna do it next year. Can you speak to the discipline of, of acting and, and why you went into it and, and what it's done for you and, and so forth? I'll go first. Well, my entry into acting w was uh, almost uh, unintentional. I was in the in the fight game for four and a half years, and I was just coming back from a fight up in Boise where I got beat up pretty bad. <laughs> my I had stitches in my eye, and I my nose was all swollen, and I. I, I was looking bad, and I happened to be uh, uh, invited to a, a wedding of a family that owned a bar and tavern across the street from, on Lancashire, from across the street from Universal Studios. And so some of the people from the, from the studios were in, also invited to the wedding, and one of them happened to be a casting director uh, an extra casting director. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but in the food chain and, and in the movies, extras are like at the bottom of the, they're, they're, they're like, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, this guy, this guy was, in, I was introduced to him and he, he took one look at me and said, What's a nice kid like you doing a game that's getting you so beat up, you know? And uh, I was still, my heart was still in boxing at that time, but uh, anyway, he, he, he said, why don't, he gave me his card, he said, get, get, here's a card, and, and if you are interested, you could, you know, you could work as an extra, and you could still do your boxing, and so I thought about it for a, few days and uh, and my ma my boxing manager was a, is, is the one that actually made the introduction and, uh, he, and, and, w and when I took the guy's card and wandered around you know mixing around the wedding guests and stuff uh, he came up to me and says what's, what's, the, what's wrong with you that that guy just gave you an opportunity that people would kill the to have, you know, and uh, anyway, I said, "Well, I'm, he said you, you, like he said, you could, you could work extra when you're not training, and when you're training, and you could don't have to work. It's not like having a regular job, you know." Sounds like he was just trying to get you out of boxing. <laughs> I th well, I don't. I think I'd still be boxing today if he had his way. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, anyway, I called the guy and. Uh, he he sent me down to Central Casting, and they interviewed me, and I then they su signed me up for their roster, and then I had to join the Screen Extras Guild. Anyway, flash forward about two years, I was sent out to do a, a Lucy show as an extra, but it, it turned out that 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 the, that the character that they had me playing had to have some dialogue. So they asked me if I would be willing to join the Screen Actors Guild. And I said, sure. So I joined the Screen Actors Guild. I did the Lucy show. And then from then on, I just, I thought, I think acting has got more prestige, you know, more money. So I quit working extra. And I, and I uh, started pursuing acting and went to acting classes and all that stuff and I uh, I hung up my gloves and uh, and I just worked as a uh, kind of a work, working struggling starving <laughs> actor uh, and, and then I I got the call for Shazam out of nowhere and 
and uh, was it was it truly out of nowhere, or did somebody know somebody that knew somebody that? Well, well it wasn't really out of nowhere. It was um, I was introduced uh, to a casting lady named uh, Meryl O'Laughlin for for another. I was introduced to her through, for another part, mm -hmm. and she just met me. And then a few months went by, and I hadn't worked for her, or met her again, or anything. But when she happened to be casting Shazam, and when when they when Jackson was dropped from the show, uh, Merrill thought of, of me and called my agent, and then my agent called me and. I panicked, of course. <laughs> Wasn't too sure whether I. Sounds like it was a lot of first impressions, just connecting with the right people accidentally yeah, sometimes. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah, really, yeah. Just, I just, just kind of swimming through the, through the reefs, you know. And Nothing you can really plan for, then you would say it just, no, it's going to happen. No. Always put on your best face. Yeah, I, I would say that always be prepared, and, uh, you know. Try to meet as many people as you can that, that are influential, and, but don't look down at the people that aren't influential. Just try to try to go on about being a good citizen and, and, and hone your craft as best you can so to be a good actor so when they do call you in, because they want you to be good. They, they, you know, a lot of people get really uh, defensive about uh, Auditions and stuff, and say, "Oh, they're all mean. They're, they're, they're," but they, they want you to be brilliant because that's you're the money. They're, they're, they're spending money on you. So uh, be prepared when they to, on these auditions to uh, to be brilliant because they that's what they want you to, want you to be. And if you're not brilliant. You're probably going to be out for another edition of Space Cells, but it's it's a tough game. It's a, it's a tough game being a, being a professional actor. Uh, even if, even if you get a series, and the and the series doesn't doesn't take, say, it only lasts one or two seasons, then you're right back where you started from in a sense. You know, unless unless you really impress the heck out of somebody. Uh, but uh, that's my yeah, story. It struck <laughs> me about Bill Shatner that he just, you know, he just kept doing TV and everything, and he'd always look for other things. And I, in reading about his life, it, it was clear why he was doing that because of, you know, family issues and things. And now he just kept putting his nose to the grindstone. Yeah, and um, he was also a, he was also a classically trained actor. I mean, a well trained actor. So when he when he did get his shot, he he, right. he he was brilliant. I mean, he he got hired. You know. Same question to you. Okay. <laughs> um, well, mine goes back to when I was a kid, living in in Florida, Miami Beach, Florida. I didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up. I think I was probably about 15 years old at the time, and. At the time, there were two TV series being shot in Florida, in Miami Beach. One was called Flipper, and one was called Gentle Ben. And they're both uh, at Ivan Tours production. He was producing both of them. So there was an agent down there, and casting agent down there, casting roles in both those series. And I don't know the whole story. I don't know how this happened. But she saw me somewhere and asked somebody if they knew me, and they said, yes, they did. And she wanted to know who my parents were. So. Someone did some research and found my parents, and she called my parents and said, would your son like to be an actor? We like the way he looks. So my mother and father asked me, you want to be an actor? I said, no, absolutely not. So I thought about it, maybe I don't know, a, few, four, you know, a few months passed by, whatever, and I said, well, I'll try this. So I started taking drama in junior high school, and I liked it. Then I got into community theater down there, and I did two, uh, I actually auditioned for two th uh, local comedy shows they were doing, theatrical productions, and I got them both. So I was casting two shows, I would do one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one evening show. My mother was driving me back and forth to each show, driving her crazy, I'm sure. 
finish one show and then go to the other one and do that one. And I liked it. So then I went to high school and I took drama there and I talked to my drama coach there, my drama teacher, and he said, uh, you, there's, if you want to be a professional actor, there's two schools to go to. One is called the American Academy in New York and the other is called Pasadena Playhouse in California. I got an audition for both, so I did. I went to New York, my parents took me to New York. I auditioned for that one and I auditioned for Pasadena and they both accepted me and I decided to go to the Pasadena Playhouse. It was a three-year college of theater arts. So I did three years of training, every aspect of theater you can think of. And the last year I was doing a professional show on, on the main stage called Life with Father with Leanne Ames and Lorreen Tuttle and Ben Murphy. And an agent saw me and he was waiting in the green room afterwards and said, you want to sign with me? You want to do this professionally? I said, I do. So I signed with her and then about a week later I graduated college and I went to her agency and she started sending me out on auditions and I was lucky I got everything I went off for, everything. So, but this was easy. Turned out it wasn't so easy because you know, I found out things weren't happening as well as I thought they were gonna happen. But I did it quite well from 1968 to about 1976 or 1977 when Shazam was off. So I did a lot of local, you know, those small TV parts down there, small parts in movies. Then they started to grow into the, the, my first TV series and then Shazam and here I am now. But you gotta have good training. You gotta go to have a good school to train with. The actor studio is probably the best right now. They're in New York and California. Can you speak to that? Hmm? Can you speak to that? Why would you say the actor studio now? Why are they the Well the other two are gone. American Academy is gone and Pasadena Playhouse is gone. Pasadena Playhouse is still there, but it's a uh, legitimate stage. It's a theater now. There's no more college. So I think probably the best training grounds for an actor would be the uh, actor studio. New York. And and and, and in LA too. Yeah. Oh, was it Actor Studio in yeah. L.A.? Yeah. Actually, Brian Cutler, who was on is one of the teachers at Actor Studio in L.A. Yeah. Oh. Brian does that. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. I knew he was a coach. I didn't know he yeah. was. Actor Studio. Actor Studio. Yeah. Huh. So you got to have a good training background. It helps. Thank you. It's a tough business to crack. It really is. Very competitive. Who, uh, who did either of you ever go up against at some point? where you either beat them out for or got beat for them and you were like, God, I really wanted that part, but, but yeah, they, they clearly were better than me or it's like, yeah, I got that part because I totally nailed it. And of course it was going to be me. Do you have an well, anecdote of that at all? I got two. The, the Little People, uh, I auditioned for The Little People at Warner Brothers, the Brian Key show. I auditioned for that. Casting director said yes. Director said yes. Executive producer said yes. And then Brian Keith, who owned 40% of the show, had the final say-so. So he came in for my last audition, and in the middle of the audition, he said Continental Airlines. And got up and walked out. What's that all about? I found out later that was his cue. If he didn't like what he saw, he was going to say Continental Airlines, he walked out. So they cast his wife's nephew in the part, who never acted before. He was a surfer in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I, that's when I learned the word nepotism. <laughs> a week later, I was visiting my parents, and I got a phone call. Pack your bags and get on a plane. You're going to Hawaii. You got the part. Because the other guy couldn't act. He wasn't a trained actor. Then there was a movie, which will remain unnamed right now. Years later, I auditioned for a movie also at Warner Brothers. And it was a me and somebody else for the main part. And I thought, this is great. This is a big movie. This is my big shot. Well, the other guy got it. And his name was Richard Gere. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> I lost the part to a big star named Richard Gere. Wow. So, <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple of uh, funny stories. Um, one, one is that uh, I, my agent had called me and told me that, that they wanted me for, um, I keep forgetting the name of that, that Tom Selleck. Magnum PI? Hawaii 5 0. Magnum PI? Magnum, yeah, Magnum PI. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting. Yeah. Anyway, that they, act, they actually wanted, they, I didn't have to audition or anything. It's just, they, they wanted, are you are available for such and such date from such and such date? I said, yeah, wow. And it just happened to be that my uh, family was going to Hawaii that same time period 
I thought, wow, that's going to be, f I'm going to be working in a in Magnum PI, and my family's going to be there. What a, it's like, like a free vacation, you know? So I'm all like, I'm, for like a week, I'm like flying on cloud nine, and, and, uh, and then my agent calls me and said, oh, man. <laughs> They, he said, don't ask me, it's not got nothing to do with you, or uh, he said, they, they decided that they, f they wanted to go a different direction, they got, they got another actor, you know. Oh, crap, okay, well, what can you, what can you do, you know. So, uh, a few weeks went by, and, and, <laughs> and um, you, 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 uh, you kind of, me a lot, you, you hang out a lot, a lot in in that business. You go to lunch and you meet meet other, hang out with your fr unemployed friends, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I'm so I this one good buddy together. of mine, <laughs> uh, we we had one of these chance meetings. But we were, were on some other audition, I think, and and uh, he's just, and he says, "Hey, hi Ken, how you doing? I'm like, hi John, how you doing?" And uh, what have you been doing? And I said, I said, God, man, you look great. You look like you got a nice tan, you know. I said, I said where'd you get that tan? He said, Oh, I just did a Hawaii Five O, and and uh, I'm not, I mean, uh, Magnum PI. And I said, Was it by any chance for the part a, 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 a cop that was? The, and he said, Yeah. I said, You. Son <laughs> but uh, I don't know what happened. I mean, he he must have had some, or his agent had a, yeah. owed somebody a, or I don't know. But but it was. I mean, we both had to laugh. I mean, I, I was laughing with kind of a broken heart. But he, it was it was funny. That's what happens. It just happens, you know. Cause he and I, he and I are both kind of the same type, and. <laughs> but there, but there's one more. St oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but there is a, st a funny story that I heard also, and I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, I, I think it is. Uh, another actor friend of mine uh, called me one evening and said, "Hey, do you do you know a guy na named uh, Stalini or Stalano or?" And, and I said. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, I said I think I know who you're talking about, but I can't think of his name. You know, I know it's an Italian name. And uh, he said, "Well, I, why?" He said, "Well, he's a he's a real cocky kind of guy." He said, "He, he said, we I, I went into audition for Police Story, and uh, and you know we, we we're all got we we all got our sides and our scripts and we're we're." getting ready to audition. This guy comes sta swaggering in. He says, hey, my name's, you know. And, and he said, well, uh, you just sit down and uh, we're running a little bit late today, so just have a seat. And, and he said, I don't wait for nobody. And he walked out. And the secretary said to this, this, this room full of auditioning actors, said, that is exactly an example of how not to get it hired in, in in Hollywood. You know what that guy did is absolutely unexcusable, or inexcusable. Excuse me. And uh, and he said, "I'm just sitting here watching Police Story. The guy was a the guy was a guest star on on the Police Story. He got the job, not only the job but the co the guest star role. You know." And uh, it was, it was Sylv Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> and that's, but that's the way he, that's the way he was, and he, and it worked for him, you know. <laughs> if I tried that, I never, you never, yeah, I yeah. never, you never see me or hear from, hear from. <laughs> I'd be out doing comic cons. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no. 
I'm afraid we are out of time, but thank you very much, gentlemen, for being here. Oh, thank you very much for, for the us. questions from the crowd. Appreciate it. And you guys are going to be here for a little bit longer, signing at your tables. Till 5 o'clock, yeah. Till 5 o'clock. Yeah. So if you guys have any other questions or you want to say, hey, get an autograph, a picture, they will be at their booths over in the middling across the way for the rest of the afternoon. So thank you very much. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.